In this video, we're going to have a look at how to solve basic trig equations. We now know that when we have a specific angle in a right angled triangle, we can also determine the ratios of the sides that go with that. For example, we know that sin from a 30 degree angle will always give a ratio of a half. This now forms an equation that can also be used in the opposite direction. If we know that the sin ratio of a specific angle is given as a half, then that angle should, of course, be 30 degrees. Because all the angles and their corresponding ratio are already programmed into your calculator, you can use your calculator to determine the specific angle for a given ratio. A trig equation then consists of the trig function, sin cos or tan, the angle, and the ratio. Calculate the size of theta. Round to two decimal places where necessary. In the first question, we need to determine the angle size that will give us a sin ratio of a half. And we just saw that that happens when the angle is 30 degrees. But how do we determine that on the calculator? You will see that above each of the trig functions on your calculator is that function to the power of minus 1. This to the power of negative 1 is the calculator's way of telling you that it will determine the angle size. To get this option on your calculator, we will have to press shift. When I press shift and then sin, you will see that the calculator is indicating that it is determining an angle for a specific sin ratio, and our ratio was given as 0, 0,5. When we now close the bracket and say equal, you will see that the sin ratio of a 30 degree angle will always be equal to a half. In question 2, we now need to determine the angle that gives us a tan ratio of 3,76. So we start with shift again and now tan. And we need to use the ratio of 3,76. When I close the bracket and press equal, we have our angle of 75,11. In question 3, you will see that we don't have the ratio yet. Because here we have the cos ratio that is multiplied by 3. That is why we need to start off by dividing both sides by 3. In this way we know that the cos ratio of this specific angle is 2 over 3. So remember that it's important to always first get the trig function and angle alone on one side before you can press shift on your calculator. Now we can say shift of cos, and once again there we have the indication that we are now determining the angle, and we want the angle for the ratio of 2 over 3. When I close the bracket and press equal, I will see that that angle is 48,19 degrees. In question 4, we have a similar situation. The ratio is not 3,5. We first need to get tan 2 theta alone on one side by subtracting 1 on both sides. Then we will know that tan 2 theta is a ratio of 2,5. So now we can say shift tan of 2,5 to determine what our angle, in this case 2 theta, will be. Now we have the angle, but the question was to determine theta, which means we need to take our angle of 2 theta and still divide both sides by 2. Once we've divided both sides, we know that theta, in this case, will be 34,1 degrees. In example 5, we once again first need to get the trig function, sin, and the angle, theta minus 20, alone on one side. This means that to get rid of the multiply by a half on the left, we will have to divide by a half on each side. Or you can of course take the 0, 0,34 
and also multiply by 2, which is the same calculation as dividing by a half. So in reality, the sin ratio is 17 over 25. Now we can ask the calculator to determine the angle of theta minus 20 by saying shift of sin of that ratio, the answer that we just calculated, and that will give us an angle of 42,84. To finally solve theta, we need to get rid of the minus 20 by adding 20 on both sides, so theta in the end will be 62,84. So to solve trig equations, you firstly always need to ensure that the trig function and angle are alone on one side of your equation. Then you can use the shift on a Casio or on some calculators the second function option to determine the angle.